Okay, in this video we're going to talk about sample rate and it's sometimes quite a misunderstood specification of your oscilloscope. So I'm going to try and simplify it the best I can. So if you want to see more videos like this on automotive oscilloscope diagnostics, make sure you subscribe to the channel and that way you'll be able to get in the comment section, join the other viewers in asking any questions you might have. So as you all know, the PicoScope 2204A is my favourite scope and it is probably one of the cheapest scopes out on the market. Needless to say that its specifications are down at the lower end compared to what you'll get on an automotive scope. So with regards to sample rate, we've got 100 mega samples per second and that's here, 100 ms slash s. Now I've also got this Hantec 6022BE and that has a sample rate of 48 mega samples per second. So a lot lower. Now if you saw the video that I did on this scope the other week, uh, you would have seen the canvas image. And if we just have a look at the difference between what we get on a 2204A compared to this thing, you'll see that the images are slightly different. There's more triangulated edges on this one. Um, now I'm going to explain why. Okay, so we've got this whiteboard and we've got voltage up the side and time across the bottom. So the sample rate can be considered as the oscilloscoped rate at which it almost takes a picture in time. So it's like the how fast its eyes are opening and closing. So if we put a sample rate in like this, okay, every time we get to this marker here, the oscilloscope will essentially take a reading, okay? So let's say here it takes a reading and it's there, okay, there. Okay, so it takes the plots and then it will give you a line which represents what the oscilloscope saw. If we increase that sample rate, with the increased sample rate, the oscilloscope is taking more pictures of what's happening on the lines in that same period of time. So here we might have dot there, If we draw the new line on, we get the idea. So it's actually taking more pictures and more samples, which will enable it to give you a more accurate image. Let's have a look on the actual scope. So that was a really crude way to explain it. Maybe showing you on here will help you put those two together and see what's actually happening. So I'm connected up to the mass airflow sensor signal on the vehicle there and this sensor signal is a frequency modulated signal and it's quite high frequency around two kilohertz so that's two around 2000 cycles in a second so we're currently set up on auto i'm going to change it to a steady five volts and i'm going to increase the time there and also put an automatic trigger on So we hold the pattern still. So here is the setting for the sample rate on the PicoScope 6 software. And you can see there that we've actually got quite a good signal and, and there's no real need there to adjust the sample rate, in my opinion. Okay. So if we reduce the sample rate, what we will see is what will start to happen is the pattern starts to become almost thinner we keep going down, it starts to get a little bit more shaky. And now we can start to see the edges are starting to triangulate a little bit. To there. Now we've got actual triangle peaks. So if we just stop that there, we can scroll through and actually see on the scope there where it has actually picked up some of the, the flat bits. So we can see here it's picked up a, a flat edge on the uh, signal. But down here we've got triangulated bits and it's all a bit all over the place. And that's because at that point in time when the scope was looking at the signal, 
that's where it was. And there's quite a big gap between the actual samples that have been taken. So if you've got a signal like this, um, it does indicate that the sample rate is quite low. However, the default settings for this at eight kilosim samples are pretty good for most things, even canvas. So let's just play it again and go back up to where we were. Uh, see, it gets square quite quickly. And there we were at eight kilosamples. So what happens if we go the other way? We said that this scope is capable of measuring 100 mega samples. We're currently measuring a fraction of that at 8,000 samples. As you can see here, not a great deal happens. You can start to see a little bit more fuzz happening on the kind of flat parts of the signal. That's where it's just picking up extra pieces of interference, if you like, that it wouldn't have seen otherwise. Here, look, we can reduce the time there to see to see that better. Okay, so you see there, we'll keep increasing it. We just get a little bit more kind of fuzz on there. So not a massive difference for the automotive application we're doing here in this time base. So I've just took it back down to eight killer samples now, and I'm going to show you a time when you will want to increase that sample rate. So let's increase the time to 200 milliseconds per division. So we're capturing about two seconds worth of data on every screen. Let's just stop that there and we'll use the zoom in function and see what we get. Okay, so there are those triangles. We haven't changed the sample rate from when we were measuring before, but we were getting nice square peaks before. Now we're measuring over a longer period of time. We've got that triangulation on the peaks. So let's see what happens if we increase the sample rate now. So let's go up to 100 mega samples, which is the equivalent of the scope. And let's start the measurement again. And we'll stop it there, zoom in. Look at that difference there. So the sample rate adjustment is really quite important if you wanna be taking measurements over a longer period of time, which is something you're gonna to want to do with automotive testing, especially when looking for intermittent faults where you might go on a road test and take a longer period of time and then want to analyze the data afterwards. Increasing the sample rate will help there. However, we've got 100 mega samples there, which matches the scope. This does actually go up to two giga samples. So let's see if there's much difference there. So we'll hit play there, we're on two giga samples. We'll stop the scope, zoom in. Not much difference from 100 mega samples. Now, why is that? If you take a look at the PicoScope site, it does show you that this, this software has a feature to um, almost enhance the sample rate. And it only really works for repetitive signals. So if you've got a signal where it's, it's faster than what 100 mega samples could measure, what the software will do is actually look at the repeated signal and actually fill in any gaps over a period of time. So it's almost like it's overlaying the previous data onto the oncoming data. So when would you want to adjust the sample rate? A good one for me would be for camshaft crankshaft correlation. So when we're measuring the crankshaft sensor and the camshaft sensor to maybe look at uh, timing problems. Um, you can take a longer sweep of data, increase the sample rate, and you'll be able to zoom in there and actually see much better information. So that gives us a case really for increasing the sample rate, but there are times when you might want to reduce the sample rate. This scope here doesn't have any active filtering on it like the 4425A and the other more expensive PicoScope products. Um, a good time that I have chosen to use this was for measuring relative compression, and it was picking up all the noise on this because it's quite a sensitive bit of equipment. So what I did is just drop the sample rate down and it cleaned up that signal quite nicely. So a high sample rate isn't always the best thing. 
So if you can think of any other times you would want to adjust the sample rate, let us know in the comments below.